Hello everyone and welcome to our program today, Shane and uh, Pastor Isaac here and uh, we are continuing our series on uh, killing sacred cows and today we're going to be killing the sacred cow, laying it to rest of the rapture. So we're going to wrap up talking about the rapture, we've been raising questions on that and then we're going to get into the, uh, uh, just talking a bit about salvation because salvation the reality of what that is prepares you for that, the rapture. Exactly. And it's so important that we, we marry those two topics so that uh, uh, our, our, everybody has these, these settled in their hearts. Exactly. So we're going to get straight into that. But before we do, please visit us online, www.gracelife.co. You can contact us. You can give towards the ministry there. You can contact us there to get in connection with Karis Ministries in Zimbabwe. We'd love to answer your questions. We'd love to connect with you. Uh, you're very welcome. Visit us www.gracelive.co. But let's get on to the rapture. Yes, it seems there has been quite elusive to really land on the rapture issue because it's it's it's, it's such a wide topic. Mm. Yet it shouldn't be a topic that we teach in the manner we teach it, uh, even as a subject. Mm. It is. Uh, I like the way you put it now that we must um, um, gravitate towards uh, the real meaning of salvation because it's in salvation that will be. Uh, assured of, mm. of uh, whatever eventualities that come with the appearing of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'll go back to 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 John 5, verse 28, 29. Let's have it in the Passions translation so that we take it from a different angle. This is this what Jesus, this is Jesus himself, the Lord, speaking. So he is telling us what will happen when he appears. The wrap up of things, the what, what will be, the, how, how will all this thing end? I think even what you've just said now is so key. What will happen when he appears? Yes. Not when he returns. No, when he appears, because he hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> 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 okay, John, <laughs> John chapter five, verse twenty-eight. Yes. Don't be amazed when I tell you these things. For there is a day coming when everyone who has ever died will hear my voice. Everyone. Calling them back to life. Everyone. Everyone. The believers and unbelievers. Everyone. And so it's not like out of their graves. It's not like the believers will be raised from their graves and the unbelievers will stay in their graves. Mm. That's the rapture that they teach these days. Mm. Everyone will come out of the graves at the same time. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those who have done what is good will experience a resurrection to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Those who have practiced evil will taste the resurrection of judgment. Can sure. you see? This that is, puts it beautifully. It's, it's, that is how things are going to, uh, to, 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 to mm. end up. Sure. If things are going to end up this way. It's, if we go to, to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 15 verse, uh, let's try from 51. I like it in the New Living Translation. Uh, mm -hmm. NLT. Yes. Ish. Uh, NLT. There we go. Now I've got Tyndale. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. 51. Uh, 51. <laughs> says, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. You see, when, 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 when Paul says a wonderful secret, mm. uh, the, it's not like secret, uh, what would the King James say? The King James would say... Mystery. A mystery. What, what the King James calls mystery, it means something that was always in the scriptures mm. that is being explained. Mm. So whenever Paul, because the New Testament is a revelation, we cannot have mysteries there. So when he talks about mystery, he's talking about what has to be explained, mm. not what cannot be explained, mm. what has to be explained. So mm. he's, he's saying, so when, whenever Paul says, let me reveal to you a mystery, or when he mentions me, mystery, whatever he says after that word mystery is the explanation of the mystery. But he says here in King James, I will show you a mystery. In the New Living, he says, let me reveal to you a wonderful yes. secret. So he's not just throwing out a mystery, no, no, no. he's actually explaining, explaining. 
So it's not a mystery it's then a mystery. after you've read the explanation. Exactly. Mm. And the word mystery in the biblical use is not mysterious. It's what needs to be explained, mm. not what cannot be mis- explained. Because mm. it's mysterious. That's good. <laughs> it's not unexplainable. <laughs> yes. It's like uh, so many people say God is mysterious. Oh, oh, oh. But he can be explained. He's not unexplainable. He, and he has explained himself in his word. Mm. Totally. Mm. You know, when you say manifestation, we're talking about nothing else hidden about God. Mm. Mm. Anyway, let's go into um, New Living Translation from verse 51. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die. So, you see, now mm. we're getting, now we're putting two together now. We are talking about the dead in uh, John 5, verse 28 and 29. Mm. We Jesus told us about those who will be dead when he is revealed, what will happen to them. And that's exactly what Paul was addressing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, Mm. going down until the end of the chapter. Now, here we're putting it together. Now, he's talking about, uh, Paul is talking about what what will happen to those people who will be alive and those who are dead. So he says here, we will not all die. So he's saying, we will not all die, which means he's saying, when Jesus appears, some people will still be alive. Mm -hmm. Some will be in their graves, yes, but some will be alive. So whatever happens there Mm -hmm. is what is being taught as the rapture. Yeah. So let's see what he says. Mm -hmm. He says, but we will all be transformed. That is what is called the rapture. Mm -hmm. The transformation or the changing of Mm -hmm. of our mortal bodies from Physical, uh, natural to bodies. Immortal. Exactly, mm. mortal to immortal. Whether that body was in the grave or that body was walking the streets. And That's it good. will happen in the same twinkling of an mm. eye. Very good. Let's carry on. We will not listen from who it will not all die. happen. Sorry. We will not all die. We will not all die, mm-hmm. but we will all be transformed. Mm-hmm. It will happen in a moment. And now he's, he's talking to believers. All, the, all are believers. Mm. In, in, in the post context, mm. he's talking about believers. Yes. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, the twinkling of an eye. Uh-huh. When the last trumpet is blown. What, what is there? Last trumpet. So there are people who are waiting for mm-hmm. a trumpet mm-hmm. blowing. No, this is symbolism. <laughs> <laughs> this is symbolism. He, he, this is a symbolism that Paul is using from the from the Greco-Roman culture in their warriors. What the mm. you know when, when a king goes away, he conquers land, mm. whatever territory he captures, and they 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 they, they announce that victory by a trumpet. Mm. Okay, so people go to join him. And they're going to occupy the territory that he's talking about. Mm. So he's talking from that metaphor. Sure, that's good. There is not a trumpet that is going to be sounding from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see? Mm. <laughs> so, okay, carry on. And the dead shall be raised in, uh, in King James there. Hold on. Uh, it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. Mm. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. That's the rapture. Mm. They will not be raptured to some place anywhere called heaven. They will be raised to live forever. Where? Mm. Where are they going to live forever? In heaven? No. You see, the Bible, the Hebrew scriptures, do not suggest a salvation that takes us to another planet mm. called heaven. <laughs> the Hebrew scriptures articulate God's plan and purpose of bringing heaven into the dust of men so that the men and the dust become one new creature that does not die. Mm. And that's the planet Genesis 1-1. Mm. Heaven and earth, that's what mm. it's talking about. Mm. So it's heaven coming, mm. not us going. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> Before we go very far, I did not say there is no heaven. Mm. Because the um, Jehovah's Witness say there's no heaven. You know, every, every, every lie normally is a perversion of a truth that already exists. There is something they've seen in the scriptures, mm. but they, that, that they've misinterpreted. I am saying, let me put myself on the record straight. There is heaven. Mm. But that heaven needs to be explained. 
that heaven is not a, a, a planet somewhere with streets of gold <laughs> where God has got earth movers constructing a house. Oh, I wish I could go back to... Gen- we, we, we have dealt with that, but so, uh, yeah, it's so, good. So it's good. He, 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 heaven is not a planet outside. Mm. Uh, um, and that truth, we get it in Genesis 1.1. Mm. The truth about what heaven is and where heaven is. Mm. So, yeah, there is heaven, but we must explain that heaven. It must be explained. Forget about the streets of gold. Forget about the mansions in heaven. There is no such thing. So, <laughs> we'll come back and we'll, 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 we'll explain what rapture is. Again, just to conclude that. Okay. But uh, what you're saying is, is like even our perspective or our view of what heaven is needs often to be corrected because it's based on tradition with the streets of gold and the mansions and, you know, it kind of appeals to the carnality. It's Mm. like like an escapism. People want to escape from this earth. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mm. So now the Lord takes his people after he has defeated Satan and he runs away from Satan so that Satan can uh, uh, occupy the earth. What kind of salvation is that? Mm. I don't like that Lord who will run away from the battle <laughs> with his people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's never going to happen that way. And the, the Bible never suggests mm. that it happens that way. Okay, let's, let's get on so that we can settle with the um, rapture. What verse are we on now? We were on 52. Yeah, we can get let's go. It's a long verse. Yeah. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, the last trumpet will be blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever, and we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die, or mortal bodies must our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. That is the rapture. No. Anti, Antichrist, no 666, mm. no nothing, nothing of that sort. Mm. That is the rapture. Okay? And those things are mentioned in Revelation, right? Let's go to Revelation. But we have one. to explain those things because we often take it in the wrong, like too literal. But now you see, the, the, the book of Revelation is an exciting piece of uh, uh, literature. Uh, literature. Mm. Exciting. And <clears throat> it, just like the book of uh, Genesis, it takes. It, it has got a lot of metaphors, mm. idioms, mm. Um, not not really shadows, but um, idioms, mm. figures of speech. So let's go to Revelation chapter one, verse. Uh, let's take it from verse five. You see, yeah, verse five. Let's uh, let's go for the King James. Our and from verse Jesus Christ, five, yeah. mm-hmm. from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness mm-hmm. and the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So the the first thing there to notice there is the word first begotten. Mm. First begotten is like saying the first fruit, Mm. which means all the fruits of salvation will be like him. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing to to notice there. Okay? So he's saying he's the beginning of the new Mm. uh, human race. Yeah, the new birth. Okay, he is the beginning. Mm. Then we go on to say, it, it says, the kings of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. So who are the kings of the earth? The kings of the earth is not your president. is not King Charles. The kings of the earth are, that he is talking about. It. Jesus is the king of kings. Who are the kings? Us, the ones who are born again. Mm. He is not talking of Prince Char- uh, King Charles there. Mm-mm. It's not talking about the earthly kings and no. princes. It's talking He's about, talking about his kind. His kingdom. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Then he says, unto him that loved us. Can you see? The King James, I love it for this one. They put love as a done thing in the past tense. It's, it's talking about a love that is established, that is irretractable, mm. a love that cannot be lost, a love that cannot change. It's settled. Mm. And that this happens now, wow. at salvation. Mm. Okay? That loved us and washed us. That word washed is not like the, word, the laundry word there. <laughs> it's, the word there is lure, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just check mm. it. It's lure, yes. L-O-U. Free it. In, in, uh, exactly. Mm. It means to, to, um, to loose you. 
to entang mm. and entangle you from that's how the NLT brings it it says all glory to him who loves us and has freed us exactly. from our sins untied us mm, from untied. untied that's a good way to describe what, it what what is he talking about he's talking about, he's saying that he has separated us untied us mm. loosened us from the effect of sin. That's why in Romans says the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. That's what he has, he has loosened us from. Mm. That which is caused by sin, the death. That's good. So salvation is the abolition of death. Mm. Salvation has not stopped your sin. <laughs> I bet you know that. But where that sin was taking, taking you is what Jesus took away from you. Wow. The death. Wow, yeah. He took your death so that you won't Experience mm. your death. He experienced mm. that death of sin for mm. you and me. Mm. <laughs> Amen. So what is important about uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 is that this is a revelation of the scriptures. It's, it has got nothing to do with the visions and all the things you are going to see afterwards. <laughs> so it's an assurance. Can you see? It is assuring. Before we go into all the things that are going to happen in the book of Revelation, there's an assurance. Mm. This which is Stated here in verse 5 is unchangeable. That's why he uses the word loved. He uses the word washed from our sins in his because own blood. The gospel didn't change just because up until the book of Revelation, now it's a different gospel. Salvation is secure. Salvation is eternal, whether it's in the book of Revelation or whether it's in the book of Ephesians. And that's what a lot of believers kind of miss. They, they start getting into the book of Revelation and then they start getting... The ex salvation is expired. Yeah, they, 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 they start to panic thinking that uh, uh, all of a sudden the conditions for salvation are different. I'll give you a tip. The way you read the book mm. of Revelation, you read it together with all the other books of the same mm. writer, who is John. So you read the book of Revelation with the Gospel of John, with the Epistle of 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. That's how you're going to understand the book of Revelation. Mm. Everything that is in the Gospel That's of right. John in the first epistle, second epistle, and third epistle, mm. they are still valid in the book of um, Revelation. Mm. And they come together to explain one good mm. salvation. That's good. Can you see? Now, see what he's going to say in uh, verse uh, 6. Get into verse 6. And he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Are we child. going to be dethroned on the rapture? <laughs> he has made us kings. You're going to see. When he says king, priest, he says Kings who are priests. That is the difference between the kings of Jesus and the kings of, of Prince Charles. He, king, priest, mm. king and priest, saying king who are the, the servants. NLT puts it like this and says, he has made us a kingdom of priests. And priests are servants. Servants. Yeah. So this is the seven king, uh, kingship. Mm. You see? We are kings by service. We, we are kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. We are talking about things that are settled that will never change. So whatever we are going to find in the rest of the book does not change this. Because what we have in the rest of the book is a mixture of the revelation of scriptures mm. and the gifts of the spirit. Mm. Remember in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul says you must judge all the gifts of the Hmm. So th that's how it is. But you don't judge the revelation of scriptures. The revelation of the scriptures is settled, like we are reading here. Yeah. So you can't be creative with it. You can't edit it. It's it's the way it is. Let me say something. I hope I won't be mistaken. I won't be uh, misquoted or misunderstood. The difference between this letter of revelation, it's an epistle. The difference between it and all the other epistles is that. Hey, can I say this word? Mm. It's like, yes, there is the revelation of the scriptures. All the other epistles are a revelation of the scriptures, mm. which is settled, mm. which is the revelation of the spirit. But the book of Revelation has got a lot of the gifts of the spirit because this person is exiled at the island of Patmos. Mm. He's having to use the gift of the spirit to know what is happening in the churches. That's mm. Christ. That's how Christ is talking to you by the gifts of the Spirit, mm, and right. the gifts of the Spirit must be ju must be judged. 
So you use whatever other things you can't understand in that book. You, 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 you go to the revelation of the scriptures to understand the revelation of the gifts. Mm. So because all the revelation gifts are judged by the revelation of the scriptures. Mm. Praise the Lord. I, it, I could have spent another hour explaining that, but I just <laughs> I'll put it down that way. So, so then there's no, there's no, there's no fear then. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, 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 we've we've explained a couple of things here. First of all, let's just in a nutshell give it to them again. Rapture, rapture, is the resurrection of the, of the physical body. Let's just say the physical, the physical, because our body is still in death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and the, yeah. And we are raised to immortality forever. Forever. We are not going to be taken to a planet. Mm. Mm. That's good. No one is going to be taken to a planet. Mm. That's good. Mm. That's good. If God wanted people to live in heaven, he would have created them there. So, so how do we prepare for the rapture? Oh, get born again. Get born again. <laughs> Get born again. Get born again. Then you are rapture ready. <laughs> exactly. Get born again. Uh, and, 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 and rapture isn't a, a, a flight ticket, right? To another planet. They use it to twist people so that they put fear in people and it becomes easier to get people's money because people trade their fear with their money. Now, now, now you're onto something good here. Because, like, this is the point here. A lot of teaching in the body of Christ is fear mongering. Exactly. All they're trying to do is get you to give more. And some of these guys have genuine hearts, but because of the misguided doctrine, they, they, they end up pulling and pulling and pulling and pushing. And they're kind of working, you know? Jesus mm. put it very simply. Mm. You, can, you can't change it. Mm. You cannot save both God and money. I don't think you'd like to contest with Jesus there. <laughs> and yet a lot of people try and mix the two. And what ends up that's happening deception. is they depart from the truth. That's deception. Yeah, of course. That's and deception. that's something that we need to get into more. It's talking about how um, people often, uh, like uh, the, finance, the, the topic of finances are so abused in the body of Christ. It's terrible. <clears throat> it's terrible. And Jesus taught so much about finances. He did not teach about how to get finances. He did not teach about how to grow business. He taught about attitude towards finances. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem today. Mm -hmm. So that one, let's deal with in the next uh, session. But let's, uh, yeah, in, yeah. in the last few minutes we have together then, uh, in order to prepare for the rapture, if you're an unbeliever, what the result of the rapture is? Eternal damnation, right? And for an unbeliever, yeah. For an unbeliever. It's destruction. That's why he said, those who believe shall not perish, but mm -hmm. those who don't believe will perish, will extinct. And so the results of the, the rapture for the believer is? Immortal life. Immortal life. We're going to live forever. A okay. body that does not die. We prepare for it by receiving Christ. So yes. how do we receive Christ? How do we know for sure that we've got salvation? You hear the gospel, which is the seed that births the life of God in our, in our, in our, in our, in our spirit. So it's not about going to church. Or obeying the Ten Commandments. It's not about going to church. People go to church because they understand what salvation is. Amen. That's good. People good. All right. Yeah. We done? No. So the 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 we receive salvation by believing the gospel. Maybe we mentioned Romans chapter nine or ten verse nine. You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and you're born again, right? And it, 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 that is not a New Testament technique mm. or concept. Mm. That's what Moses taught. Mm. That's why you find in Romans chapter 10, when Paul is teaching about salvation, mm. he goes to court Moses, which means people have misunderstood Moses. Big deal. Mm. Yeah. In, 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 uh, we, we grace people. I mean, in the grace circles, I've done it, you've done it, and lots of people do it. We put Moses and Jesus against each other. Exactly. When Moses was speaking about Jesus, and Jesus uses Moses to show that he's, he was there from the beginning. And if you can discredit harmony. Moses, yeah. if you can discredit Moses, then you don't have a Jesus. Mm. Because Moses wrote about <laughs> Jesus. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, uh, 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 I mean, it, it's, what's it, John chapter 5, he says that. I want to say something about salvation. Mm. Uh, from uh, um, uh, Hebrews 7, verse 25. I want to read it from the Amplified Version. 
Amplified Classic. Hebrews, Hebrews 7, verse 5. 25. In the Amplified. Mm -hmm. this, is your, this is the result of believing the gospel. Mm -hmm. And it is true that those descendants of Levi... No, no, no. 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 Hebrews, Hebrews 7, 7, verse 5. 25. 25, sorry. Yes. Therefore, he is able also to save to the uttermost. What is uttermost? Completely, he, perfectly, oh, finally. And? And, or, and for all time and eternity. So Jesus, once you believe the gospel, you are saved for all time and eternity. You don't lose it because of the rapture it's, that is coming. It's an eternal salvation. It's not a temporary salvation. It doesn't expire. Mm, that's powerful. Mm. Can you? Those who come to God through him... By Since he is always living to make per petition to God and intercede with him. The effect of that is saying that because Jesus is alive and you never die again. Because you never die again, you cannot lose your salvation. The only Amen. way you can lose your salvation Amen. is if Jesus could die. And Jesus cannot die. If you look at the whole book of Ephesians, it, I mean uh, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, it always refers to salvation as eternal. eternal. Redemption is referred to as eternal. Eternal means forever. It means it's established. It means it cannot change. And that's one of the things that so many Christians fall apart about. They don't know if they've lost their salvation or can they lose their salvation. And believer is secure. There's a demon in the church. <laughs> and he comes through the microphone. <laughs> 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 it changes meanings of words from yeah. eternal to temporary. No, it's not temporary. That, that demon is terrible. Yeah, of course, of course. But anyway. That, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and I mean, that's why, you know, I've chosen, I always like to finish off the program and, 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 and focus in on these things because we tend to focus on, on a lot of things. And yet, I think for the believer, the most, some of the most important things some of the most important things for us as believers to focus in is on our union with Christ. That's why I remind you, you're one with, with, with Christ. You need to focus in on that union that you have with Him. He lives in me and I in Him. I'm one with Him for eternity. And we're filled with His presence. You know, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells in us personally and corporately as the church. We're filled with His love. You know, we've, we've been born of love. So that means I am love. And so that's how the, 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 the world, the believers should experience me. And we express that love in different ways. But how can we experience that when we know that you're going to send, a, <laughs> Jesus is going to send an antichrist and some 6666 and stuff like that. Yeah. How can we have peace with such kind of exactly. doctrine? But the thing is, is we focused on the wrong thing. We need to be focused on, I'm filled with this love. I'm filled with this power. And then the amazing thing, even if I'm penniless, I am blessed. Awesome. Life We're going to talk about that more next time. <laughs>